All right, great. Well, let's go ahead and get things going here. So um, my name is Keith Arnold. I'm with Sandy Solutions. Uh, just wanted to start off by thanking everybody for joining us today for our virtual lunch with our uh, good partners at Veeam. Um, today we'll be focused specifically on their O365 backup solution. Um, for customers of Veeam today, this is something that can plug in and integrate with your current platform. Um, for those not running Veeam, uh, it is also a standalone product. So um, very versatile platform. I'll let them dive into the, the ins and outs of their solution. But um, wanted to start today out um, by uh, briefly introducing Sanity to those of you who we haven't worked with um, and, uh, and kind of what we're all about. So, uh, and just a reminder, today's session is being recorded. If there's anybody on your team that couldn't join, uh, we'll make sure to send out the link and you can share this with them afterwards. So, <clears throat> all right. So who Sanity is and what we're all about. Uh, Sanity was founded 15 years ago uh, here in Denver. And uh, we are crowd, plowed, uh, proud to call Colorado home, but we have grown our operations uh, throughout the Midwest, mountain region, and to, uh, all the way to the West Coast, um, adding sales and engineering resources um, uh, pretty extensively across the region. And, uh, you know, we now serve customers across the country and across the globe, um, kind of through our, our main hubs, uh, Denver, Salt Lake, Minneapolis, um, with teams in Austin and Oklahoma City. So um, growing quite a bit in the last 15 years um, across the territory, um, you know, and just i think one of the main thing that sets sanity apart from from a lot of our competitors i you know not to bash anybody else but there are a lot of transactional uh resellers out there who will you know make sure to get you what you need um but uh you know sometimes aren't there to follow up and be with you through the whole life cycle of that solution so uh you know we're all about creating experience getting to know your organization what's important to your organization uh what's important to your individual role at your company and uh what makes you successful? So we're we're all about developing that relationship, uh, the trust, understanding what's important, and developing experience. Honestly, like I mean, that's it's a, we all have tough jobs, and so we do like to make things fun and educational. Um, so we host a lot of events uh, these days, all virtual, but uh, we do like to do a lot of fun stuff with our customers too. Once things go back to normal here, um, so like I said, it's more of an experience than just a transaction for us, and I think that's really important. Um, another big part, I think that's probably one of the most important things in our space, is to know what we're talking about and do exactly what we say we're going to do. So we have extensive certifications uh, across all of our partners and services that we offer, um, and uh, from a, both a pre- and post-sale standpoint. So, you know, definitely want to make sure we're designing uh, the right solution on the front end and putting things together within this kind of ecosystem of partners that I'll describe. Um, you know, holistically designing a solution to meet your your specific requirements and then going out and deploying the solution, making sure it's working as it should. So very important to know what we're, what we're talking about and to execute as we say we will. Um, and I, I think one thing that's worth noting uh, is that we always, you know, make sure to act in the best interest of our partners and customers. So it's, you know, uh, always operate to the highest ethical and professional standards. And that's, you know, that's always served us right. Unfortunately, it's not maybe always the case out there, but um, for us, that's, that's always been kind of a core pillar of what we're all about. Um, so our roots are in the data center, um, but we've, over the last 15 years, uh, grown our portfolio out to kind of cover a holistic view of all things IT. So, you know, with our roots in server storage, and networking kind of, you know, production and DR data centers, um, we've grown heavily into virtualization, uh, security, cloud computing, um, and just kind of looking at things holistically and making sure we have the best and breed partners, um, you know, that we can integrate and, uh, you know, make sure that everything is working uh, together and that we've looked at every initiative kind of from every angle. So um, we continue to grow our practices and add uh, specialized resources within each of these practices. So um, yeah, definitely uh, want to make sure our, our customers are, you know, using our full team because we have lots of resources to offer. Um, another big part of, you know, uh, working with Sanity is knowing our method. So this is our RX method. So this is how our services team engage, but I think it really represents how our team operates, right? We do a lot of discovery and data gathering on the front end to make sure that we know everything uh, that's going to make this project successful. Um, we then design the solution plan and coordinate the, uh, the the deployment, go and actually deploy, configure, and optimize that environment, and then really focus on the follow-up and optimization of um, that solution over its life cycle. So, um, you know, 
kind of I'll focus a little bit more on the discovery and follow up piece here. But this is kind of the method. And you know, once you've worked with us, you kind of understand how we go through this methodology. Uh, and it's, it's really uh, led to a lot of success for our customers. Like I said, we're real heavy on assessment. Um, so we like to gather as much data on the front end to take uh, kind of all the guesswork out of designing a solution. Uh, we have what's called a sanity check that kind of gets a baseline of your environment, um, whether it's, you know, your production and DR environments, if it's a specific instance, such as like a database environment that we need to look at. Um, we have all kinds of data collection tools um, that we leverage, and then we use those tools to go to de design the solution. Uh, these environment uh, assessments include server storage, network assessments, uh, Wi-Fi site assessments, uh, so very specialized tools that we have um, that we leverage to design these solutions. And then I think another way that we really stand out, um, you know, and allow you to then take this solution confidently up to your decision makers is we really craft these proposals so you're not just getting a bill of materials or, a, you know, a piece of paper with some SKUs on it. You have Visio diagrams, you have data sheets, you have case studies, and things that really help you understand exactly what you're getting and help you build that case within your team so that other people understand what the solution all encapsulates and why it would be successful. So want to make sure to arm you with, you know, kind of a comprehensive document so you understand every all the moving pieces for, you know, these very important uh, projects we will work on with our customers. So um, a few ways that I think Sanity is different. Uh, we, you know, really pride ourselves on going out and vetting kind of best and breed partners within uh, kind of each of our main pillars. So, and within that ecosystem, when we when we select a partner, uh, we really create a focus and make sure that we're not just able to, you know, sell the product, but actually are experts on how to design and deploy that solution. So, and a lot of these partners kind of, uh, you know, play hand in hand, especially Beam. So, uh, you know, we like to, you know, be able to work with maybe three or four different vendors in any given solution to make sure that it all works together. You know, we're doing all the deployment and configuration and, uh, you know, everything comes together. So, um, you know, like I said, that just really lends to the fact that we have comprehensive certifications across all of these uh, strategic partnerships we have. So, uh, you know, it's important that we uh, have those certifications and are, you know, uh, staying up to speed on the latest and greatest with each of these partners. Uh, another thing that we have is a sanitarium uh, it's here in Denver, but uh, it is offered up remotely to, um, you know, virtually to any of our customers across the country. Uh, within that demo lab, we have a ton of hardware, um, you know, storage, server, hyperconverge, um, as well as VMware, Veeam, uh, all this running. So if there's something you want to get your hands on before you actually put it into your own environment, we have a, a test lab that is uh, at your disposal. So we love to leverage that and either have customers in to check it out or like I said, spin up a virtual instance for you. Uh, and another piece is we, like I mentioned earlier, we just, we love to, uh, you know, we we typically do a golf tournament every year. We would do ski days and snow cats and, uh, you know, movie premieres. It's just, it, it's fun to kind of have those out of the office experiences with our customers. And, uh, you know, those are very important to us. So we'll, we'll continue to do the virtual events in the meantime, um, you know, but uh, as things kind of go back to normal, uh, we just love, like I said, getting getting out of the office and uh, doing fun things with our customers. I think it's really, really important and something that people really appreciate. So um, just a couple quick notes on our partnership with Veeam. Uh, we have been partners since uh, 2011, so coming up on a decade partnership with these guys. Uh, over those 10 years, we've got over 100 customers across the country uh, within whether it's commercial uh, space, a lot of state, local, and federal government customers, um, a ton of higher education, Healthcare, so kind of across a bunch of different verticals within, uh, you know, all kinds of different environments. Uh, we have extensive uh, pre and post sales um, certifications and expertise, um, not just on the core product of being back in recovery, but O365, uh, the availability orchestration. Um, you know, Veeam's really grown their portfolio in the last uh, few years, and we want to make sure that we're, you know, up to speed on all those things. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a lot of alliance partners uh, that play nice with Veeam, uh, Exagrid, NetApp, Dell, HP, you name it. Whoever you need to work with to kind of make that backup and data protection strategy work, we bring those partners in, uh, make sure everything's integrated tightly. So um, with that, just want to thank everybody again for joining us. I'm going to hand it over to Chris and the Veeam team, and they will dive into their O365 solution. Thanks, Keith. Appreciate that. Um, and yeah, thank you and the Sandy team for having us here today. 
lots of good info. You can see why, you know, why Sanity is a gold partner of Veeam and, and why we love partnering with them. Um, so I will go ahead. Hopefully you can all see my screen here. So uh, we'll just kind of jump in here. So uh, we're going to talk about Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365 today. Uh, specifically version four. My name is Chris Sprague. I am the technical partner manager uh, for Veeam in the PAC Northwest and Mountain State. So I work closely with uh, Sanity, uh, making sure our you know customers are taken care of and, and our partnership is, is very, very close. So just quick summary, uh, I'll give you a, a quick Veeam corporate overview and our cloud data management platform. Then we'll jump right into the Microsoft 365 stuff, um, including Microsoft's shared responsibility model and our supporting Y materials. Uh, then we'll get into Veeam Backup for Office 365 and what's new in version four. And if we have time, we'll do a little product demo and I'll show you how it's uh, packaged. So jumping right into the corporate overview here. So this last year we had a, you know, a tremendous year for Veeam. We just, uh, broke a billion dollars in revenue for the first time um, in 2019, which is huge for a software only company, uh, which we are software only, we're hardware agnostic, um, you know, let, let you choose your best in breed hardware to go with our software. Uh, we cover 82% of the Fortune 500, our customers. Uh, we're in over 160 countries uh, of customers. I believe that's about 170 now. We're actually at 4,300 employees globally. Um, we have over 375,000 customers, uh, as you can see there, and we're 100% um, sales through the channel. So we'll always go through someone, um, you know, go through Sanity and, and let them bring their value add uh, that they can with the relationships they have with the customers. Um, and then you can see there at the bottom, we've got, we have an NPS score of 75, uh, which if you're not aware, that's a score from negative 100 to positive 100, uh, how likely uh, current customers are to recommend the product to new customers. And you can see where others such as Amazon and Netflix fall there. So uh, differentiators that Veeam is, you know, these are the, the pillars of Veeam, right? Simple, flexible, and reliable. Um, so reliable, our customers in the past coined that phrase for us, it just works. Uh, and that has been Veeam's tenant since the beginning. And still today, as we grow and become uh, more enterprise friendly and are able to scale out with big environments. Uh, the product itself is very simple to install and it still just works. Uh, very flexible, like I said, we're software defined, hardware agnostic. Uh, we want you to be able to, to use the hardware you already have or be able to go to the cloud or, or any type of vendor you'd like. Um, and then simple, so we have built in intelligence, uh, actionable insights with our Beam One tool. Uh, we can provide 100% verified recovery with our Sure Backup features. Um, and then we're scalable, like I mentioned. Uh, we are clear market leader, Gartner, Forrester, and IDC have all put us at the end of last year in the um, leaders, uh, in the leaders quadrant and Gartner, uh, of course, um, and then Forrester and IDC named us uh, leaders as well. And then just lastly here to touch on the, um, the Veeam Cloud Data Management Platform, and then we'll dive right into the O365 stuff. So this is, if you're not familiar with Veeam, or if you are, you may not know all that we can do. Uh, this is our entire platform. So today we will focus on that small square at the top that says SaaS, which is our Microsoft Office 365 backup product. Uh, but we also have our main product called Veeam Backup and Replication. So I identified that by that, that bigger green box on the left there. Um, that is our main bread and butter, like I said, where we back up uh, virtual, physical, so we can do VMware, Hyper-V, and Nutanix AHV as virtual hypervisors. Uh, Windows, Linux, Oracle, and AIX as physical uh, agents. Um, and then we can tier all your data to the cloud, or we have native um, AWS and Azure cloud backup products now as well. We have a monitoring and analytics tool, it's called Veeam One, that will provide you uh, all types of monitoring and analytics around either your virtual environment and your backup environment. So you could, uh, you know, do sizing estimates, future sizing estimates, say for your backup repository, or you can run um, oversized or undersized VM reports on your virtual infrastructure. And then we have a uh, an orchestration product. So if you already have Veeam or you're looking at, you know, 
uh, expanding Veeam or doing more in your DR and orchestration. Uh, Veeam Availability Orchestrator does all the orchestration and automation for you. Once you build that out, it actually builds all the run books and documentation for you, so you no longer have to document uh, DR practices. Um, and I can tell you, as a as a technical writer in in my past past jobs, um, you know, you can write DR documentation for six months, and then by the time you put it out, it's out of date. So with this product, that never happens. So we have a full suite uh, just to show you. We do backup and recovery, monitoring and analytics, orchestration and automation, and and help you do all that with cloud mobility and being able to uh, move your data when and where you need it. All right, so let's just jump right into the shared responsibility model. And why do I need a backup of Microsoft Office 365, right? Because the customer perception is Microsoft takes care of everything. You can see in this picture, right, the infrastructure, the data, why do I need a backup? Well, the reality is Microsoft doesn't take care of everything. Right, Microsoft is responsible for the infrastructure and the uptime of Office 365. The customer reality, our side, is that uh, the data remains our responsibility. So Microsoft ensures that infrastructure is up, uh, that the hardware is not going to go down. You know, even that someone can't just walk into that data center and, and take that data. You know, they have that type of security. But the data itself um, and the long-term retention is the customer's responsibility. And we'll get right into this. So this is the Office 365 shared responsibility model uh, put out by Microsoft. Um, and so this shows you the difference between Microsoft's responsibility and the customer responsibility, our responsibility. So under primary responsibility, again, global infrastructure, right? They're, they're responsible for the uptime of that, um, having a replication going on, you know, having a couple of copies uh, where in that field, you know, our responsibility is the data, access and control. So you have to be able to provide the access who can touch that data and taking care of that data. Um, in the supporting technology areas, right, you can see, I kind of already mentioned it, but that 365 data replication, the DC to DC geo redundancy. Um, and they have a short term re recycle bin, kind of a, a, an archive, um, where the backup is still our responsibility, right? Copy of your data stored in a different location. And you may say, well, if they're doing DC to DC geo redundancy, why do I need to make a copy, right? Because redundancy or replication is not a backup. It's a true replica. So even though they're doing replication and yeah, if they lose one site, that other site will be there for you. That's part of the infrastructure they keep up. But if that data gets corrupted, that corruption is replicated to the other site. If that data gets deleted, that deletion is replicated to the other site. You don't have another copy. Um, and that's where a true backup copy comes in, right? A separate backup in a file that cannot be altered. Um, and then you can see here full, ter full data retention, short-term, long-term retention is also on the customer responsibility. And then the security and regulatory pieces, this is where responsibilities get blended. And so that one big box there, but again, Microsoft is going to be responsible for that physical security, logical security, making sure people can't just walk into their data centers. Uh, but the, on the customer side, you know, we're responsible for accidental deletion, um, malicious insiders, right? If an employee leaves and wants to retaliate, um, ransomware, malware, hackers, Microsoft is not protecting you from that. That is still uh, your responsibility. And then same with uh, regulatory, right? They have HIPAA and SOX and different controls in place. But as the data owner, we still have to answer to those industry regulations, um, demands from legal and compliance officers. That still falls you know, on us as the customer. Microsoft's not going to answer those questions for us. And I should say, you know, um, while I'm going through this, if anyone has any questions, you know, please feel free to use the, the Q&A or the chat panel there. Um, chime in, happy to answer questions. At, any time as we're going through this. So please feel free to, uh, to chime in. Um, so supporting why materials, right? Why exactly do we need an Office 365 backup? And we, we talked about this a little bit, um, but here's the six big reasons, right? Accidental deletion, whether that's you know a true accident by a current employee or something else that causes a deletion to happen. Um, those happen a lot and that gets replicated. So we want a backup. Retention policy and con confusion and gaps, and we'll get to that here in the next couple of slides. Uh, internal security threats, right? 
we already talked about malicious insiders departing employees. You know, that happens a lot more often than you think. I actually saw a study that said over 40% of employees leaving, um, leaving their employer take proprietary data with them without knowing it. So, right, whether we're meaning to or not, um, you know, you may take some data or some old emails or proprietary information, um, or an employee may have done that. Uh, it's very easy to do. Um, and then external security threats, right? Those outside that we, we can't help internally, ransomware, rogue, zap, rogue apps, you know, email phishing, those types of things. Um, and then legal and compliance re requirements and managing hybrid deployments and migration. So one thing that our Office 365 backup is great for is uh, managing that hybrid deployment. Uh, so I've had quite a few customers actually start using this product before they had even uh, gone to O365 and they start backing up their on-prem deployment and then you use this product to help them migrate um, and we can restore um, we can restore mailboxes or tenant to any tenant we would like so you can do that hybrid setup so we talk about you know these things insiders accidental deletion so how often do these really happen so we conducted a survey this was last september a little over 1500 respondents there you see um, and 37% said they had user error or accidental deletion happen out in the cloud. Uh, another 18% said security threats. And then you can see um, 19 and 20% either say retention policy gaps where they thought it was protected, but it wasn't, or we don't use, you know, we, we haven't had any problems like that. So um, really the majority here, other than 20% of respondents that have had uh, data issues in the cloud, some sort of data loss. So speaking of those retention policies, you know, what exactly does Microsoft uh, backup? So this is a, a graph of, of Microsoft's different backup levels, or shouldn't even say backup. This is what the data they retain, right? So inbox or folder data, as many of you are aware, usually is, is held for one or two years and then moved to an archive. Uh, deleted items are held for 30 days and then they're permanently deleted. Um, and you can see auto archive is generally at one month and then auto archive. Uh, a big one that I see happens a lot that a, a lot of companies don't realize happens is that bottom one, employee leaves the company. So if you have an employee leave the company and they're removed from Active Directory, uh, Microsoft keeps their information for one month and then after that it is permanently deleted. Um, so I've seen that catch a couple of customers because you're just not aware that after 30 days, they're going to remove all of their Office 365 data. So um, something that really interests me uh, on this slide is down at the bottom here, right from Microsoft's, uh, Microsoft's Six Steps to Holistic Security, Chapter 1, they say that the average length of time from data compromise to discovery is over 140 days. So what that's saying is, there's generally 140 days of a date from a, when our data is affected to when I will notice it, right? Yet their default settings only protect for 30 to 90 days. So they're basically telling you right there, you know, the average, average length of data compromise, you won't be protected by default in Office 365. So with Veeam, of course, we can protect it out as, as long as you want, right? So, Theme is not simply about filling those gaps, it's about providing access and control to all your data sitting out there. Uh, so you can pick the length of time you wanna keep data, whether it's three years, five years, and not have any policy gaps or confusions, right? And this is a true backup, not an archive. So where Microsoft might, you say, yeah, Microsoft archives my inbox, right? Yes, it, it archives it, but that is a move. And if that becomes corrupted, you're, you're, you've lost your data again as well. So this gives us uh, a true backup, ease, ease of use to bring back, um, ease of use to know how long we're going to uh, retain this data. So I don't uh, see any questions here. I don't know if there's any questions out there yet or not. If there are, just let me know and I'm happy to answer those. So um, one thing we want like to point out, right from Office 365 Trust Center, you can see here in the yellow box there, with Office 365, it's your data, you own it, you control it. You know, Microsoft tells you right off the bat that this is your data, you control all of it, so we are responsible for it. And then also within there, um, 
within their site. You can see here uh, in this box, point in time restoration of mailbox items is out of scope. So Microsoft has you know, some very basic tools to help you get emails back, uh, but point in time restoration is completely out of scope. So you, you can't go back to a date and time that you'd like to. So with that, let me just double check here real quick. I don't see any, okay, not seeing any questions yet. So just let me know if you have any. So with that, let's talk about um, Veeam's backup for Microsoft Office 365 itself. So we've talked about, you know, Microsoft eliminates the need to host your own infrastructure, right? They take care of all that infrastructure uh, and the redundancy of it, but it doesn't replace your need to have that backup. So again, with Office 365, it's your data, you control it. So being backup for Microsoft Office 365 um, eliminates that risk, right, of losing that data. It, we cover Microsoft Exchange, uh, SharePoint, uh, OneDrive for Business, and uh, Teams data today uh, to ensure that you have complete control of all your O365 data, can, can restore it when you want, can access it when you want, um, and bring it back where and, and how you want. So we do have a um, uh, community edition like we do with our other products. So we have a community edition that provides a free backup tool or is a great way to test it out if you'd like. Uh, this is specifically designed just uh, for Office 365 implementations of 10 users or less. So you get 10 users of um, Exchange, 10 users on OneDrive and, and one terabyte of SharePoint Online. So a great way if you just have a small deployment or you wanna test it yourself. And that's the community edition. So Office 365 backup and recovery, what, what do we cover with this? So we can now back up Office 365 to any location, whether that's on-premises in your data center or out in the cloud object storage with that unlimited uh, cost-effective storage you can use out there. Um, so we, again, we can protect all your data uh, in Office 365 from those security threats, uh, from retention policy gaps, accidental deletion, ransomware, malware, uh, protect you from all those good things. Uh, quickly restore individual Office 365 items and files uh, with, you know, like it says here, industry leading recovery flexibility. And I'll show you some of that. And this is really where Veeam and our products, um, you know, especially this O365 product really shine. Uh, our restore capabilities, and I'll show you here on the next slide, um, outpace what anyone can do, uh, and, and especially the native tools, uh, just give you lots and lots of flexibility. And then help you um, meet legal and compliance requirements with the uh, efficient e-discovery of your uh, Office 365 backup data. So just kind of talking about those restore options. And I generally try to make uh, slides that aren't eye charts, but this one's kind of meant to be, um, just to show you how many ways we can restore. So you can see there's 25 recovery options uh, across the, the three products here. Um, so just to point some out, you know, in exchange, you can restore an exchange item to the online bell box um, or the calendar. Uh, we could restore that same item to your on-premises mailbox and calendar. So we can go between tenants. You can just save those as email attachments or PSTs, of course. Um, and then you've got a lot of the same options in SharePoint, right? Restore it on-premises, restore it to the cloud. Do I want to save it as a file, save it as a zip? Uh, do I need to restore it back to where it came from? And then OneDrive as well. And I'll show you uh, some of these. We'll, we'll jump into the interface and I'll show you a short demo uh, of how easy this product is. All right. And with that, we'll talk about what's new in version four. So continued innovation. So Office 365, this product has, you know, came on, uh, came onto the scene, was very popular right off the bat, and this team has just continued to put out update after update. Um, you can see here version one came out in November 2016, uh, where we did, you know, exchange online and on-premises. Uh, the next version came out just a year, just under a year after that. Uh, brought us multi-repository, multi-tenant, increased our scalability. 
And then we cut down to almost, you know, much less than a year for the next release where we brought OneDrive, SharePoint, we redesigned the wizard. Uh, we added a lot of new features there you can see. And then last April was version three that brought in all the security uh, enhancements where we can do multi-factor. We increased our, our backup speed um, and we added visibility and analytics. And now version four, version four came out in December. Uh, and this is where we've added a few new features. So the big one that customers were asking about is object storage support. So now with, you know, being back up for O365, um, you can do a cloud optimized deployment, right? So you can go directly to cloud storage, as you can see here, AWS S3, Azure Blob, IBM Cloud, or any of the S S3 compatible providers. So you could utilize, you know, those hyperscale clouds and that cheap, object storage um, that can honestly scale forever for you. Uh, and like I said, as we are a software only or software defined company, you can deploy Veeam wherever you like. So we can have a full cloud optimized deployment. You can deploy Veeam backup for O365 out there in Azure, for instance, if you wanted, and then point it to Azure Blob as your repository. And now it's all in the cloud. Um, you could do it all on-prem. You could do half and half if you like. I know I actually have a couple of customers that <clears throat> deploy this in Azure and back it up to uh, S3 so that they're in somebody else's cloud in case, in case O365 goes down or all of Microsoft goes down. The chances of that are probably pretty slim, but not a bad idea, right? Um, so reduce costs with object storage, right? Only pay for what you consume. When you're using object storage, they only charge you for the amount of, of S3 or Azure Blob you're using, so you don't have to buy a, a big storage array and, you know, pay for all of it and only use 50% of it, right? That's the benefit of the cloud. Um, unlimited scalability, another benefit, right? Um, Azure is not going to run out of space for you to do your backups. And then um, simple deployment in the public cloud. Uh, so uh, the product is in those... Um, you know, cloud marketplaces out there, you can just simply deploy and then point to a, a cloud repository if you wanted. Uh, added security. So version uh, four added security with at rest encryption in object storage. Um, so like I said, version three brought about multi-factor logins. Uh, so we added security there. And now with version four, not only can you land your data on an object storage repository, you can now encrypt that data that's sitting on that, on that repository as well. And then but faster backup performance. So every time we release it, and I know this is, you know, faster is kind of anecdotal, uh, but every time we release this, they're finding ways to make backup performance faster and faster uh, so that we don't have to wait forever. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the cool things we do is if you're backing up um, mailboxes, for example. If you have a large mailbox, after a certain time, Microsoft will throttle the, the download, the, the data transfer on that while you're backing it up. Veeam notices that that mailbox got throttled, pauses the backup of that, goes to the next mailboxes, will go through, and then at the end of the job, will go back to the mailbox that was throttled and start backing it up again after the, the throttling has, has gone away from Microsoft. So, so some cool ways that we're speeding up backup performance there. Um, and really with our product now, like I said, you could deploy out in the cloud, bring data back on premises. If you want control of it, keep it all in the cloud. Lots of options there for you. So uh, before we jump into the demo here, uh, did any questions come up? I haven't seen any. Okay, nope. Okay, so hopefully everyone uh, still seeing my screen here. Got it. Got it, awesome, thank you. All right, so this is the uh, Veeam backup for Microsoft Office 365 console. Uh, one of the great things about this, it is, looks just like our other console, but it is separate. So like Keith said before, if you're a current customer, we can add this on. You can back up O365 as well. If you are not a Veeam customer, um, we'd love you to be one, but if you're not and you just want to back up O365, you can do that 
with this product. So you, there's no need to have to buy all the Veeam platform or Veeam suite. You can do just O365 if you'd like. So I'll show you real quick here how simple this really is. So when I'm when I first come in here, you won't see these three organizations. You'll just see the organization box. You'll hit add organization. You get an option here of what's my deployment? Is it in Office 365? Is it hybrid or is it on premises? Right? And then you can select the services you want to protect, Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive for Business. We can select all of those or any of those. Then you get a region. So you default region mostly, we do Germany and China. Um, we've got the US government um, and the US government DOD. Uh, both work fine. They, they say ex experimental because they're government, um, but we can do the DOD stuff as well. And then, like I said, we offer modern auth or basic auth. Uh, now that came with the last version. And then I will show you because I don't have credentials. If we actually go into this one and edit this organization that's already set up, you see the same options. Got basic auth set up for this, and then it's just a username and password. Uh, and then you can grant, grant this account required roles and permissions checkbox. And you can say use the same credentials for SharePoint online and OneDrive for business if they're all using the same credentials. So very simple. Um, you know, pick, pick your deployment, uh, pick your auth type, and then give your credentials. And now you've got uh, your organization set up to get backed up for Microsoft Office 365. So the next thing you'll do when you see this, you'll, uh, you'll click on your org and you can set up a backup job here. What I'm gonna do is just show, edit the one we have so that we can go through all the steps. But if we set up a backup job, we give it a name, you can give it a description. Then we're gonna say, what do we wanna back up? So we can just back up the entire organization, grab everything, um, or we could say backup following objects. And you could add users, you can do it by groups, you can do it by SharePoint sites. I can even say organization here. And what that does for me, I can grab this whole organization. And instead of grabbing the whole organization, I could then edit this and say, I wanna do the whole organization, but I'm only, this backup's just gonna be for mail, right? And I'll set up a different backup job for OneDrive or, or uh, SharePoint sites or our mail archive, right? So you can choose what you want here. Um, once you've chosen what you want, we can also do excludes. So like this job in selects the entire organization, but then excludes, you know, these global administrator, the personal sites. So you can um, do exclusions ver via users, groups, or sites as well. Uh, then you'll pick your proxy, or this is what we call the data mover, if you're familiar with Veeam. Now, when you install Veeam Backup for O365, uh, this by default is right where you install the server. So you'll have a default, like this says default backup proxy. You'll have the default data mover. That's, you know, the data mover is what does all the work really. Um, we have these proxies available so that if you become very large um, or keep growing or need to scale out, you can scale out more proxies to help you move that data in a timely fashion. So, um, and then backup repository. So this is where we can select um, you can see we've got on-prem repository. I can go directly to Azure Blob or AWS S3. So this is uh, the new enhancement where we can go right to uh, an object storage repository. Then finally, for this job, we'll just say we want to run the job. You can run it daily at a certain time, weekdays, pick your days, um, or you can go periodically and we could run this job, you know, every hour if you needed to. Um, so some flexibility there around scheduling. You know, we have our default retry. We always retry three times. You can change that if you want. And then you can also set a terminate this job if it exceeds a backup window. So, you, you know, if you know that you only have eight hours in the night and you don't want stuff backing up when people come back in, you can set a backup window there. You can start the job right away or just schedule it. So anybody have uh, any questions on uh, the organization or setting up a backup job there? Hey, 
Hey, Chris, I, I did have a question. Um, once mm -hmm. the once you have backed up all those uh, the inboxes and everything, uh, or the SharePoint, OneDrive, whatever, um, is it is it self service um, for customers to get uh, like for a user to get to that, or how does the how does the recovery look? Yeah, so perfect. Going into recovery right now. Um, so okay, cool. today, uh, th this would have to be um, uh, requested uh, by a backup admin, but let me show you how easy it is um, to, you know, to, to recover stuff here. And I'll show you that. Um, so we'll just go into um, exchange here. So. Uh, okay, so Exchange is open. So when we do this, and, and maybe I went a little too fast there. So when we're in a backup, so this is the backup job here that's highlighted. I can right click and you can see I can explore Exchange, SharePoint, or, or OneDrive. Um, I can also click the ribbon up here and do the same thing, explore Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, or you can go to a point in time. So I could say point in time, and then you could pick a different point in time uh, based on days here, um, or we can use the latest restore point. So once I say, let's explore that and bring it up, we bring up the Veeam Explorer from Microsoft Exchange. So these explorers are proprietary built in-house by Veeam and are meant to look very much you know, like the application that you're used to seeing. So if I bring you an exchange here, you can see not only do we back up all the users, we back up all the data uh, within here, right? So um, archive, calendars, contacts, inbox, deleted items, right? Permanently deleted items. So those permanently deleted items that you know are gone forever from Microsoft, we back those up as well. Um, so nice thing, let's just go in here. So if I wanted to, you can see I'm in the inbox and I go, I need to restore an email. I can double click and open this email right here. Um, make sure, yep, it's the right one. And then if I right click, I have all these different options. So I can restore right back to the mailbox it came from. I could say restore to, and I could point it to a different mailbox. I could bring it to my on-prem exchange server, like they said. Uh, so I can restore to a different location that way. We could simply export as a PST. Um, we can save it to the desktop, save it as a message file, or I could, if the uh, employee just wanted this email, I could just send it back to them, just email it. Or I could say, uh, I don't have an SMTP server set up, but I could say um, send to and, and maybe HR or the manager wanted an email or whoever it may be. So lots of ways to restore this. Um, and I don't have access to this exchange or I'd actually show you some of that. but. Uh, very simple. I could actually, I could, if we wanted to, I can say um, save to desktop. You'll see the restore process there. And it's already saved to the desktop. So if we close this, um, and then there's my, I don't have Outlook set up, but there's the restored, uh, there's the restored email you can see. So very simple, quick. Um, and then the same thing for, you know, uh, OneDrive. If we go into OneDrive, I'll show you real quick how, how simple and easy this is. Now to your question, we do have another product. I don't want to get too off track, but we have another product within our Veeam backup and replication product called uh, Enterprise Manager. Um, and that's where some of our self-service portal is or where uh, end users could request a restore. So they could request that in here. Um, but right now, 0265 is, is a standalone product. Wow. So. Uh, no, and I actually, I was thinking of your standard uh, backup product where it has the self-service. But I, I've, we found that most IT departments don't want self-service. I was, I was meaning more to get at the uh, individual uh, mailbox recovery, individual file recovery, because that's usually the request is from a user to get this specific file or this specific email back. Yeah. And I knew you guys can get, can get really granular and send it right back to them. That was, I think, the more of the, the important part, okay. especially Perfect. for House, House, House Stark. I've got to love your Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, perfect. Yeah. One thing I actually forgot to show you that you just, it was a great point. Um, I don't, I don't believe it's, it's configured in here, uh, but, to your point about, hey, I just lost an email. I need you to go get that one email back uh, or one 
document, uh, I don't remember the title of it, we have this compare with production button right here. Um, so if I had authentication, I could show you, but what it does is it will compare this backup to everything from pr production and then we'll tell you what's changed. So you'd see over here on the right, it'd say this email and it, delete, it was deleted. So that actually helps you uh, find items if, if you know, the end user is not spe very specific about what it was they lost. Um, so really cool feature there. And then you can see the grayed out piece here shows changed, show changed items only. So um, I think that's about it. Was there anything else? I mean, any questions coming up or did anybody want to see anything else I didn't show? That was great. I think an awesome overview of the interface. It's definitely uh, helps to see it in action for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, great. It's, uh, you know, it's very easy for, if you're familiar with, you know, Microsoft, you're familiar with ours, you can see we have the ribbons, the tabs, you can right click anything or use the big ribbon buttons. So very intuitive. For sure. That's awesome. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I have a question. Here, that was a, a nice presentation. Um, if you're doing cloud to cloud backup and your say your repository is S3, um, does if you're restoring things, does Veeam reach out to that S3 storage to make egress, like to, to reach out and call those those objects, or does it do something else? Yeah, you mean uh, so if you're backing up to AWS like S3, for example, is that what you're saying? Correct. I mean, you, then, I guess what I'm getting at is you want to do restore. charge each time you are searching around for that one email you need to find. Ah, great question. Okay, now you got it. No, Veeam is smart enough not to go out and pull in all that data when you're searching. That's a cache. It's a local cache um, on the server. So as you're, as you're saying, compare to production and let me grab these files and look at them, uh, no, we're not pulling all the data down, right? So being smart about that, you're not getting um, charged for the exploring. Now, when you do a restore and it actually pulls like all the bits down, there, yeah, there may be some egress costs, right? Yeah, okay, um, that answers my question, uh, thank you. Perfect, yep, and Veeam even has smarts built in where we, we do look at the blocks. If we have pieces of that data, certain blocks, we'll pull those locally and not pull them from the cloud so that we save you uh, egress costs that way as well. Cool. Thanks for the question. Um, so just real quick, I'll just finish in on packaging here. Um, so backup for Office 365 uh, comes in, in one package, basically, or two options, one package. <laughs> so we provide Exchange Online and on-premises, SharePoint Online and on-premises, and then uh, OneDrive for business. Uh, and then we back up the data for Microsoft Teams, and you can use object storage as a repository. So it's all one solution. You don't have to purchase Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive separately. Um, and then same, I already mentioned the community edition, same for that, uh, except you get 10 users of Exchange, 10 for OneDrive, and, and a, a terabyte of SharePoint. Still can use the object storage, um, and you do would still get support, but it's gonna be best effort, right, on that community edition. Um, so again, one price for everything. Uh, one thing I, I will mention, uh, if you watched VeeamON, normally I don't talk about futures, but VeeamON was just a couple weeks ago and they announced Veeam backup uh, for Office 365 version five. And that will include a, uh, include a Microsoft Teams Explorer or restore uh, that Veeam Explorer. So while we get the data today, the APIs weren't in place for the team structure and being able to restore everything uh, to its structure. So with the next version, we'll have that full support. So not you, those explorers I just showed you for Exchange, SharePoint, and OneDrive, we'll have one of those four teams as well. And then lastly, if you'd like, you know, we have a trial download. You can always go out there and try it out for 30 days, see how it works, you know, um, contact you, you know, your Sanity team or myself and the Veeam team to help you get that rolling or if need be, or if you try it out and figure you like it, Yep, sanity, and they can they can help you get this going. Um, 
but that's all I had. Uh, thank you all for joining. If there's any other questions or um, concerns or thoughts, please please let us know. We'll use the last few minutes to answer those. And thank you all. That was great, Chris. Yeah, thanks for for all the the details and actually diving into the uh, the platform itself. That was uh, definitely a great review. Um, if there are any questions on the line, uh, you need to raise your hand, enter them in the chat, or uh, or unmute yourself. Otherwise, um, we will follow up uh, with everybody with more information so you have a, a further understanding of the solution. Um, and yeah, I mean it's we already have a ton of customers that um, were able to quickly deploy this solution, get it in place, and um, you know are now feeling much better about not just all their their inboxes for their team, but also you know, very critical, um, you know, information within OneDrive and SharePoint, you know, uh, for the organization. That's not just mailboxes, right? It's all very critical, um, you know, storage targets that uh, that um, it's disturbing when you see the SLAs from Microsoft. And I think most people, it's not that they have another solution that isn't doing well, it's that they don't have any solution in place and they're not aware that Microsoft doesn't protect these things. So I think that one slide you had is very telling. And so, um, you know, um, definitely point is to educate and make sure people know what they're getting and not getting. And, you know, hopefully we, we have a way to help out. So, um, well, great, Chris and uh, Veeam team. Thank you so much. This was great today. Um, everybody, customers, thank you for joining today. Uh, we'll follow up with more information and your gift cards. Um, and uh, yeah, um, that concludes our virtual lunch today.